chapter 5, The Prophecies of Merlin, from the History of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey of Monmouth. While Vortigern, king of the Britons, was still sitting on the bank of the pool which had been drained of its water, there emerged two dragons, one white, one red. As soon as they were near enough to each other, they fought bitterly, breathing out fire as they panted. The white dragon began to have the upper hand and to force the red one back to the edge of the pool. The red dragon bewailed the fact that it was driven out and then turned upon the white one and forced it backwards in its turn. As they struggled on in this way, the king ordered Ambrosius Merlin to explain just what this battle of the dragons meant. Merlin immediately burst into tears. He went into a prophetic trance and then spoke as follows. Alas for the red dragon, for its end is near. Its cavernous dens shall be occupied by the white dragon, which stands for the Saxons whom you have invited over. The red dragon represents the people of Britain, who will be overrun by the white one. For Britain's mountains and valleys shall be levelled, and the streams in its valley shall run with blood. The cult of religion shall be destroyed completely, and the ruin of the churches shall be clear for all to see. The race that is oppressed shall prevail in the end, for it will resist the savagery of the invaders. The boar of Cornwall shall bring relief from these invaders, for it will trample their necks beneath its feet. The islands of the ocean shall be given into the power of the boar, and it shall lord it over the forest of Gaul. The house of Romulus shall dread the boar savagery, and the end of the boar will be shrouded in mystery. The boar shall be extolled in the mouths of its peoples, and its deeds will be as meat and drink to those who tell tales. Six of the boar's descendants shall hold the scepter after it, and next after them will rise up the German worm. The sea wolf shall exalt this worm, and the forest of Africa shall be committed to its care. Religion shall be destroyed a second time, and the seas of the primates will be moved to other places. London's high dignity shall adorn to Rebernia, and the seventh pass of York will be visited in the realm of Armorica. Minevia shall be dressed in the pole of the city of the legions, and a preacher from Ireland shall be struck dumb by a child still growing in the womb. A shower of blood shall fall, and a dire famine shall afflict mankind. The Red One will grieve for what has happened, but after an immense effort it will regain its strength. Calamity will next pursue the White One, and the buildings in its little garden will be torn down. Seven who hold the scepter shall perish, one of them being canonized. The bellies of mothers shall be cut open and babies will be born prematurely. Men will suffer most grievously in order that those born in the country may regain power. He who will achieve these things shall appear as the man of bronze and for long years he shall guard the gates of London upon a brazen horse. Then the red dragon will revert to its true habits and struggle to tear itself to pieces. Next will come the revenge of the thunderer, and every one of the farmer's fields will be a disappointment to him. Death will lay hands on the people and destroy all the nations. Those who are left alive will abandon their native soil and will sow their seeds in other men's fields. A king who is blessed will fit out a navy and will be reckoned the twelfth in the court among the saints. The realm shall be deserted in the most pitiful way and the harvest threshing floors shall be overgrown once more by forest rich in fruit. Once again the white dragon shall rise up and will invite over a daughter of Germany. Our little gardens will be stocked again with foreign seed and the red dragon will pine away at the far end of the pool. 
After that, the German worm shall be crowned and the prince of brass will be buried. A limit was set for him, beyond which he was powerless to pass. For a hundred and fifty years he shall remain in anguish and subjection, and then for three hundred more he shall sit enthroned. The north wind will rise against him, snatching away the flowers which the west wind has caused to bloom. There will be gilding in the temples, but the sword's cutting edge will not cease its work. The German dragon will find it hard to escape to its cavernous lairs, for vengeance for its treason will overtake it. In the end it will become strong again just for a short time, but the decimation of Normandy will be a sorry blow. There shall come a people dressed in wood and in iron corselets. They will take vengeance on it for its wickedness. This people shall give their dwellings back to the early inhabitants, and the destruction of foreigners will be clear for all to see. The seed of the white dragon shall be rooted up from our little gardens, and what is then left of its progeny shall be decimated. They shall bear the yoke of perpetual slavery, and they will wound their own mother with their spades and plowshares. Two more dragons shall follow, one of which will be killed by the sting of envy, but the second will return under the cover of authority. The lion of justice shall come next, and at its roar the towers of gold shall shake and the island dragons tremble. In the days of this lion gold shall be squeezed from the lily flower and the nettle, and silver shall flow from the hooves of lowing cattle. Those who have had their hair waved shall dress in woolen stuffs of many colours, and the outer garment shall be a fair index of the thoughts within. The feet of those that bark shall be cut off. Wild animals shall enjoy peace, but mankind will bewail the way in which it is being punished. The balance of trade shall be torn in half, and the half that is left shall be rounded off. Kites will lose their ravenous hunger, and the teeth of wolves will be blunted. The lion's cubs shall be transformed into saltwater fishes, and the eagle of Mount Aravia shall nest upon its summit. When the dotia shall be red with the blood of mothers, and the house of Coroneus will slaughter six brothers, the island will lie sodden with the tears of the night time and everyone will be encouraged to try to do everything. Those who are born later shall strive to fly over even the most lofty things, but the favour given to newcomers will be loftier even than that. Piety will frown upon the man who has inherited goods from the impious, that is, until he takes his style of dress from his own father. Girded around with the wild boy's teeth, he shall climb over the mountain summits and higher than the shadow of the helmeted man. Albany will be angry. Calling her near neighbours to her, she shall give herself up entirely to bloodshed. Between her jaws there will be found a bit which was forged in the Bay of Amorica. The eagle of the broken covenant shall paint it with gold and will rejoice in her third nesting. The cubs shall roar as they keep watch. They will forsake the forest groves and come hunting inside the walls of cities. They will cause great slaughter among any who oppose them, and the tongues of bulls shall they slice off. They shall load with chains the necks of the roaring ones and live again the days of their forefathers. Thereafter, from the first to the fourth, from the fourth to the third, from the third to the second, shall the thumb be rolled in oil. The sixth shall throw down the walls of Ireland and transmute its forests into a level plain. The sixth shall unite the different parts into one whole, and he shall be crowned with the head of a lion. 
his beginning will yield his own unstable disposition, but his but his end shall soar up towards those on high. He shall restore the dwellings of the saints throughout the land and settle the passes and places which befit them. Two towns shall be covered with funeral. Two towns shall be covered with funeral poles, and to virgins he will present virgin gifts. By doing this he will earn the favour of the thunderer, and he will be placed among the blessed. From him there will emerge a she-lynx, and this will know its way into all things and strive for the downfall of its own race. Because of the she-lynx, Normandy will lose both its isles, and be deprived of its former dignity. Then the island's inhabitants shall return to it, where a great dissension will arise among the foreigners. A hoary old man upon a snow-white horse shall divert the river Piraron. Above the eastern stream he will measure out a mill with his white rod. Cadwallader shall summon Cananus and shall make an alliance with Albany. Then the foreigners shall be slaughtered and the rivers will run with blood. The mountains of Armorica shall erupt and Armorica itself shall be crowned with Brutus's diadem. Cambria shall be filled with joy and the Cornish oak shall flourish. The island shall be called by the name of Brutus and the title given to it by the foreigners shall be done away with. From Cananus there shall descend a fierce boar which will try the sharpness of its tusks in the forests of Gaul, for it will lop down all the larger oak trees, taking care, however, to protect the smaller ones. The Arabs shall dread this boar, and so shall the Africans, for the impetus of its onslaught will carry it into the remotest parts of Spain. Next after the boar shall come the ram of the castle of Venus, with golden horns and a beard of silver, breathe such a fog from its nostrils that the entire surface of the island will be overshadowed by it. In the days of the ram there shall be peace, and the harvest will be plentiful because of the richness of the soil. Women shall become snake-like in their gait, and every step they take will be full of arrogance. The castle of Venus will be restored, and Cupid's arrows will continue to wound. The source of the river Amni shall turn into blood, and two kings will fight each other at the ford of Star, for the sake of a lioness. All the soil will be fruitful beyond man's need, and human beings will fornicate unceasingly. Three generations will witness all that I have mentioned, and then the kings buried in the town of London will be disinterred. Famine will return, and death and citizens will grieve for their townships. The boar of commerce shall come and call back the scattered flocks to the feeding ground, which they have all forsaken. Its breast will be as food to the hungry, and its tongue will assuage the thirst of those who are dry. From its mouth shall flow forth rivers, which will water the parched gullets of men. Then a tree shall spring up on top of the Tower of London. It will be content with only three branches, and yet it will overshadow the whole length and breadth of the island with the spread of its leaves. The north wind will come as the tree's enemy, and with its noxious breath it will tear away the third of the branches. The two branches which are left will occupy the place of the one ripped off. This until one of them destroys the other by the very abundance of its leaves. This last branch will fill the place of the other two and it will offer a roosting place to birds come from foreign parts. To birds native to the country it will seem harmful, for through their dread of its shadow they will lose their power of free flight. 